Welcome to July's Lico Challenge. Today's problem is word break two. Given a string S and a dictionary word dict containing a list of non-empty words, add spaces in S to construct a sentence where each word is a valid dictionary word. Uh, same word can be used multiple times and you can assume the dictionary does not have duplicate words. I mean, say we're given the string cats and dog. Uh, we could form two sentences, cats and dog and cats and dog out of this, this dictionary. Um, so, I think in this case, the order is going to matter, and we can immediately think of probably some recursive solutions for this problem. All right, so let's go to the whiteboard and see if we can make some intuition out of here. Uh, all right, so say that we had the words A, B, C, for example, like A, B, C, and we had a dictionary with the words A. Uh, let's say B and BC. So this will be our dictionary. Um, we can just do a recursive function, right? And say we start with A, check to see if that's inside of our dictionary. It is, so we could pass in the rest into our next recursive call. And then we check, hey, is BC in, or B in our dictionary? Oh, it is. So we pass the rest into our recursive call. And is C in it? Our dictionary? No, it's not. So this just returns nothing. Uh, but here we go to BC. Yeah, that's in our dictionary. Now we have an empty amount. We've gone to our end, so we'll add that to um, our output. So we have A and BC. So then we come back to our recursive stack and then we do AB. AB is not in there and ABC is not in there. So that just ends our call. So this would be our answer. So knowing that, that's pretty straightforward. We could probably do some sort of dynamic programming solution to optimize, right? So in the same way, let's say we had like an array, uh, something like this uh, for our letter. And again, say that A, uh, B, and BC were the words in our dictionary. We can have some sort of array that represents uh, the words up to this point and what we could figure out at this, right? So say this was like ABC and uh, this also represents ABC and don't be fooled this isn't like a single letter it's kind of like representing a B and a B C same thing here uh, so uh, we need an empty position here but say we're checking to see all right first position a does a exist yeah it does so we'll add that and then we'll check uh, what about a B a B does not so that's empty a B C nope that doesn't exist what about starting at B we can't start with B here so this would just be a null so we'd have to actually start at this position. And does B exist? Oh yeah, B does exist. But we need to also return add what we had previous to what we're checking. So this A here needs to be added as well. So this answer would actually be um, A and B, right? Right. Because uh, at A we can get one and at B we can get one. So we have to return whatever we got from A before. But here, at uh, ABC, uh, or I'm sorry, BC. This would be BC here. Yep, so it would be BC. We could return another one. So this would be BC plus A. So we'd add, just add a space in right here uh, to recall that. And it just kind of be the same thing over and over again. So uh, hopefully as we code this out, it'll start making more sense. Um, and I should warn you, this is probably going to be a long one because there are some problems with this solution. So let's first initialize two variables. Let's first do the length of the string. Uh, we'll also make a dict because this actually is a list. We're going to make this into a set. And that's going to allow us to check to see if the word exists in O of 1 time complexity. Next, we need our DP array, right? And DP array is just going to be a list of lists uh, for actually not a list of lists, it'd just be, um, no, it would be a list of lists, for in range of length, or we already have length n, and we need one for freebie, and we'll, you'll see why in a bit. Uh, finally, we have our DP array, and we want to set the first position as an empty string. And this is going to be what allows us to um, check for the empty position because 
in our in our loop, we need to add whatever was previous before. And since the previous one, if it's a blank string, it's just going to be empty. Uh, we'll need that in there. So for um, let's see, start in range of n because we want to check every start position. And for let's say end in range of uh, start plus one all the way to n. I believe that's right. So what are we checking here? We want to check to see if this substring is inside of our dictionary, right? So if the string from start to end in dict, uh, then we want to add it to this position. But um, there's a problem here because we could have, we need to add whatever we figured out for the, for the um, start position we're checking right now. And we might have multiple answers to that. So we'd have to do some sort of for loop to check for that. So for, um, say, sub in, in the DP start, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to add to our DP whatever position we're checking now. That's the that's going to be the end, and we're going to append um, the sub plus a space plus this current. Oh, I'm sorry, the substring, right? So start end. And that's going to go through the entire loop. It'll be like, um, uh, what would that be? Time complexity of n squared plus the times the length of the string. Which I'm not. I'm not so sure. It'll be. It'll be greater than n squared for sure. Uh, but that's the worst case scenario. And after that, we'll just return our uh, DP array at the very end. Uh, so just be return the DP minus one. But we want to return that uh, with the subspace gone, right? So that would actually mean um, for s in dp last one, we're going to go only up to starting at the second position. And that'll just be another string. So let's make sure this works. Uh, I'm not sure if I actually got that right. Nope, I did not. So what did I do wrong here? Um, hmm. Start plus, start plus end. Okay, so I, I think I know what I did wrong here. Um, this has to be a list because I did a for loop, right? So let's make sure. Oh, still wrong. Okay. Print P. See what I do wrong here. It looks right, uh, but for some reason I'm not getting that last position. Hmm, the dog. Okay, so do I need to do one more loop? Is that why? Um, I don't think so. And P minus one. So I, I'm pretty sure I'm messing up. Um, the number here. So what am I doing wrong? God. All right, uh, plus one. Nope. And dog. Start plus one and start. Okay, yeah, so my fault. Um, this needs to be plus one. Yeah, there we go. So, okay, there we go. I, we think we solved it, so we can submit it. Um, but this is going to fail. And this threw me for a fit quite quite a bit. It sucked um, because I couldn't figure out why this wasn't optimized. We get a memory limit exceeded. 
And the reason for that is what if we had like situations like this, right? Where uh, we have just all A's and this is gonna create a bunch of substrings that's just gonna run out of memory. And I try to think of a really clever solution for this, but I just couldn't. Ultimately, what I decided to do uh, was uh, just kind of do a cheat. And one way we could do that is, why don't we just start off with out not building this DP array, instead just check to see if a solution even exists. And to do that, it'd be very similar, uh, but what we can do is create another DP array. Uh, but this one we'll call it solution. And what we're gonna do is check to see if a solution even exists at the end. So uh, everything is gonna be pretty similar, uh, but what happens here is instead of this for loop, uh, we'll say, all right, if um, start and end in dictionary and dp start, if this is true, then we will set this end to true. And that way we can just check if dp solution at the very end, if this is not true, then we know that there's no uh, sentence that we can form. So if not at the very end, then just return an empty string or empty list, sorry. Uh, so let me make sure I got this right. Solution indict is true. I just need to set the very first position as true. Okay, so let's try to submit that. So this is kind of a hacky solution. Um, and there, that gets accepted. And what this allows us to do is uh, quickly check without creating all these like sub lists or sub strings and check to see if at the very end we could even form a solution. And if we can't, then just don't even bother with any of this. And that does get us accepted, but unfortunately, if perchance like this um, was a super long string and there was repeating letters and all that, then potentially this would fail as well with the memory limit exception. So I don't know what the best answer is to tell you the truth. Um, and I'm kind of running out of time today to really look into it deeper. Maybe you guys can think of uh, better solutions, but this is what got me uh, got me by. So thanks for watching my channel. And remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.